Hi, this is Dara, and I'm here with another video on Notion. So recently, a few people were asking me, how do I keep track of my herbal studies in Notion? And so this video goes out to them. It's actually quite timely because I've only recently updated my area um, where I'm tracking my, my you know, items. And that's because I've originally set up Notion, I mean, I originally set up my herbal space in Notion like the first week that I was learning Notion. It was like the first thing I did. So over the course of the years, um, that has served me well, but now I'm ready to kind of build something out that's a little more useful. So here you'll notice I actually have my phone up and running on this as well, because this is one of the few areas that I do make use of Notion on my mobile phone. So most of the time I'm sitting at my desk and working and therefore you know, I'm using this full desktop space to work in, um, but there are a few places where kind of on the go I want to capture notes. So what I've done here is that I've created this space for journal. Like if you've seen any of my other videos, it usually starts with a task list, a to-do list up in this corner. But I really wanted that on my device, the journal is the first thing that I see. I also have it filtered so that it only shows what was created today. So in, in you know reality, it should be either things that I've just, just added or that I'm about to add. So this way this space is empty and clear and I can easily just you know click on new and create a new note and start going. So I brought that up to show you know that that's kind of the, the, the way that I want this to work um, on my phone. All right, let's go ahead and just get out of that. All right, so this space, I actually have two dashboards for my herbal space. This is the primary dashboard and this is very action oriented. It's the things that I am trying to do and accomplish in my studies. So as I said, I have my journal and I have the study plan. What I've done is that my journal database, let's just go ahead and peek at that. The journal database has a study date attached to it and it has a status. So that makes it so that I can use one journal for both my notes and my task items. So if it has a study date and if it has a, a status, um, then it will show up in that study plan date list. I'm also trying really hard to only keep you know, one or two items in progress. So usually maybe a class, maybe an experiment. And then I have this section that's on deck of the things that I want to study next once you know I've, I've accomplished whatever it is here. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I usually have a task stream and I tie everything into that task stream to remind myself every day what I need to do. With my herbal studies, I don't have that as part of it. It would be easy to add that in as an aspect if I wanted. This could be a project within my life organizer. But really, I have a couple days a week where I have assigned myself study time, so I don't need to worry about reminding myself. I just know like Saturday mornings, for instance, I have about three hours before my children are up and running around where I can just focus and study, and so I'll come here. I won't look at anything else. I'll just focus here. All right, so then I have my classes. And so these are actually three different schools I attend for herbalism. They're all online. There are a couple more that I um, sometimes will take a lesson from, but they're not like full-fledged classes for me. So I just kind of keep them noted in, in my journal and I don't, pull, I don't create a whole um, layout for them. Okay, so let's dive into a class and see what that looks like. So this is one of the classes I'm taking. And here I have just a quick link to get there. If there's any handouts they have, the handouts will be up here. Um, my journal, which this is just a skeleton because actually I have very many general items from this class, but this is a particular class I'm taking right now, which is on respiratory health. So here's the journal of my notes. And in here I've got a skeleton of the chapters and I could just put notes in here or sometimes they have handouts I'll drop the handouts in here um, in this case the class name and the journal and the the journal is the same as well as this journal item is also um, shown as a task so it appears here in my task but an example where that's not so straightforward 
in this one I have this uh, monthly ma uh, monthly Materia Medica is actually the name of the course and this is a note on the marshmallow monograph which is one of the items that um, he's teaching in in the class um, all right so then I have these pins so these are just things that I find out on the internet somewhere and I use the plugin to the you know the Chrome plugin to pin it to this page and then I can come in and decide like what I want to do with these things when I find it so for instance I have the status must try and I've got one of my global tags um, applied and then this is just the, the copied body the only thing I did was move the link which usually appears here up into the metadata and then I have my reading room so these are the books that um, I'm collecting I show um, if you go in here I actually show like what format I have it in and then the status and and I just have the the image I could also take notes on the book if I want to in here usually I just take the notes straight in my Kindle but I can even export that and you know put all my highlights and notes from the Kindle you know in in here for for saving all right, so let's take a look at the engine that's kind of running this before we go look at the other dashboard, which is the book. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that what I usually do is I have very few tables and I try to link them all together to kind of create a system that runs um, through relate relationships. But in this case, I, it was really important to me, like for instance, in the Medica Materia, it was really important to me that I'm making use of these um, this metadata here. I want to make sure that every time I'm I'm tracking these types of things. So instead of having the different tables relate to each other, they all relate to a common global tag. So you'll see these ones are from the global tag. So marshmallow, this is a Latin name. It's great for the lungs. Um, I might put some other known names like here on garlic. Garlic has many other known names. Um, uh, marshmallow is good for, you know, if you have asthma and the family name. And then I repeat the herb name just so that it will show up with that, with that global tag. So again, here's the global tags. And I do have a gallery view of this. And the important things for me to really think about in terms of this table is this, the name of the tag itself, and I could give it an icon, so this is an example of one with an icon. The parent, so in this case, I have these classes that belong to this course, okay? And then the category itself, and the rest of them are just the relationships and in multiple in many cases the relationship is going to happen multiple times so here it's related to the herbal journal the class here it's related to the course here it's related to and I just put a general tag in case there's something else that I wanted to use on that one right these links make m way more sense in the table that's using them than they do here because I would never actually look here I would only look to you know kind of do some maintenance on these three columns, which is why the gallery view is actually the best. I could add counts here, and that might be something else that I think about, like how many things are tagged here and then counted out, but I, that's a lot of effort. I don't feel that I want to do all that. I do have in the video where I talk about doing global tags, I, I do believe I show how to count things if that's something you're looking for. Herbal pins, I think I've shown you like what's in there. Uh, okay, so here's another one is the recipes. So here for recipes, I'm going to show the source. Now most of the recipes I create myself, but if I do find a recipe that's out there, like why not you know, make use of something that somebody else has shared? So for instance, the tea that I drink for my asthma every day, I have two recipes. One was like a self-created recipe after using a recipe that was created by um, Katya and Ren from Commonwealth 
um, herbs. They really worked well for me. And so I use their recipe a lot, but then now I also use the one I create. So I would put them as the source for theirs and I would leave it blank for mine. Again, I'm going to put those, you know, tags for conditions, herb solution type, uh, any other general tags that might relate to the recipe. I want the time to create. And this is where it gets complex because if I'm talking about, um, let's say I'm making an elixir, I want to add in the time it took to make the base tincture and the base honey. So that would be, you know, four weeks plus, you know, I don't know, 15 minutes or however long it takes. And then I have a place to mark it as favorite. So things that I use often, I will, I will click with this just so that they are, I can find them faster. And then herbal conditions, I'm just building that out, but right now I have that, I have the condition name and then whatever herbs are going to work with that condition. And then again, just repeating the base tag. All right, so that shows you, those are the, the tables that are running this. So that's pretty straightforward. So the other look that I wanted to have is this is kind of, as I said, this is where I'm, I'm in action, I'm doing things. But this is kind of like my grimoire, my Book of Shadows, right? I don't have any spells, so so to speak, but maybe that's something that I'll add. But it's just a quick way to kind of get in here and be more on the side where I'm kind of reading and reviewing. So I've got my affirmation here. Um, I have my journal. I just decided that that should also go here. Um, quick link to Medica Materia so that I can do a search and find, you know, whatever it is that I'm looking for and same with recipes and and conditions just quick links in here that I could search and find uh, what I need but this is space is meant to be more contemplative you see already with the, the you know graphic I've added this feather there might be more kind of art and inspiration that I add here over time to just make it feel more um, sacred I guess is the word I'm looking for Anyway, so that is how I am running and keeping track of um, my work and studies. And hopefully this was helpful for you. If you are not an herbalist, I do still think that this could apply to a lot of different areas of study, especially if you're studying online um, or using like a mix. You know, here I have a mix actually of online podcast uh, books, hands-on, you know, etc 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 so you know hopefully this is something that you know is is helpful all right so i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye